All right, welcome back to our unit on wind and atmosphere. Okay, today we're going to look at energy in our atmosphere. And we're also going to look at um, CFCs and how they're affecting our atmosphere. So, our objectives, day two of three, you will know how much radiation from the sun is either absorbed or reflected by our Earth. Okay. You will understand how the Earth transfers heat by convection due to the unequal heating between the equator and poles. Okay. And you will know how CFCs have created holes in our ozone layer. Okay. So, for your quick write, what do you think heat really is? Okay. How does heat move to different objects? Okay. If you heat up a frying pan, where does that heat go? Right. So, what regions of the Earth are warm? what regions of the earth are cold okay and then finally how do you think heat flows from the warm areas of earth to the colder regions of earth okay it's just what you think five easy points for a quick write write a good sentence please hopefully two to three if you can all right, all right. heat is the energy that flows from an object with a higher temperature to an object with a lower temperature right so if you heat up a frying pan you know that it's eventually going to get cold and that heat has left the frying pan right so when an object has no heat we say this object is cold right so heat is the heat is transferred by either conduction or convection so conduction versus convection what's the difference here well conduction is the transfer that occurs when molecules bump into one another it occurs with solids right solids are like metals like a frying pan so when a frying pan heats up the metal atoms bump into one another and the heat is spread okay well let's say you have a metal pot of boiling water you have a flame here okay well convection is the transfer of heat by the flow of a heated material Okay, the flame heats up the metal pan by conduction, but the water in the metal pan begins to flow. Okay, so when you heat water up, okay, the hot molecules begin to move faster and they spread out, becoming less dense. So the hot stuff rises, the low density stuff, and then it cools as it rises and gets farther from the heat source. And the molecules move closer together, becoming more dense, and they sink. And you get a con what's called a convection current. Okay, So it occurs with gases and liquids because these states of matter can flow, right? Water can flow. Air can flow. And air, our atmosphere, is a gas. So our atmosphere moves heat by convection here. Okay? So what is heat and how does it spread? Remember, question goes on the left-hand side, answer on the right-hand side. This is the answer. This is the question on your notes. Okay. Use the answer bank, please, to determine which word best completes this sentence here. Okay. You will not use all these words, just so you know. Okay. All right. So go ahead and pause this while you write, please. If you need to go back, if you forget or you need help uh, determining which word best completes the sentence, just feel free to go back and revisit it okay go ahead and pause this I'm gonna move on <clears throat> all right so energy in our atmosphere how does our atmosphere uh, become warm well it becomes warm from radiation from our from the Sun right radiation enters our atmosphere from the Sun so radiation is the transfer of energy in the form of electromagnetic waves okay so Examples include radio waves here, okay, and microwaves. Our sun gives off radio waves and microwaves, okay? And that is one type of radiation that can heat our atmosphere, okay? Perhaps the most influential form of radiation is infrared here, okay? Infrared, these heat waves come from the sun, and these waves greatly affect our atmosphere and warm our atmosphere. So infrared or heat waves. Okay, and finally we have visible light, right? We get light. We can see because of radiation or light from the sun. These are all types of radiation. Yes, light is radiation. Most people don't realize that. Okay, and then if you ever go, if you get a sunburn, that sunburn or skin cancer is a lot, probably cause of ultraviolet or UV radiation from the sun. Notice 
We get longer forms of wavelengths, and as we they change, they become more dangerous or more energetic and more dangerous to us. So we get to x-rays. There's a reason why your, your dentist or your doctor puts okay, a lead vest over you because x-rays are dangerous. But our sun gives off x-rays and once again these x-rays come to us okay, from the sun through space heating our atmosphere. And then finally the most dangerous of all are gamma rays. If I can get over there. Let's see here. If I can find my mouse. There we go. Gamma rays, okay, which are the most dangerous. Okay, a little bit of gamma rays can be very ha harmful to you, okay? So that's radiation, okay? So real quick, what is radiation? Question on the left-hand side, answer on the right-hand side. Use the answer bank to determine which word best completes this blank here. What type of radi radiation is missing here? Okay, just go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. Okay, so solar radiation from the sun. Some solar radiation is reflected by our atmosphere. In other words, it hits these clouds or air molecules and it bounces back into space, okay? Like a giant mirror or something. Well, some is absorbed as heat, okay? And it's insulated. Like, our, remember, our atmosphere insulates us and keeps us warm. So that atmosphere absorbs a lot of that radiation or heat from the sun. Well, how much? <clears throat> Let's say this is 100% radiation from the sun. Okay. Well, 50% of that radiation from the sun is absorbed by the surface, land and sea, and is converted into heat. Right? So we feel it as heat. Okay. So 50% is absorbed by the surface, land, and sea. Okay. 20% of the radiation is absorbed by our atmosphere and clouds, by our air and clouds, right? And is converted into heat. So we have 70% total has been absorbed by the land, water, sea, air, and clouds. Now, 30% is reflected back into space. 10% by clouds and 20% by land and sea. Okay. So for your notes, what happens to 100% of the incoming solar radiation from the sun? Okay. Question on the left-hand side, answer on the right-hand side. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. <clears throat> All right. Unequal heating from the sun. The sun heats up our earth unequally or uneven. Okay, solar radiation is more direct or concentrated here at the equator. So it's more stronger, okay, or concentrated. Solar radiation is weakest and more spread out up here at the poles. Notice it's spread out over a greater area. So it's we say it's more diffuse or spread out, less concentrated. Okay? This creates a temperature imbalance. Hot equator and cold pole. Okay? So here's kind of how it works, right? Solar radiation is more direct and concentrated here at the equator, making more hotter places on Earth. And because the Earth is round, solar radiation becomes weaker and more spread out as you move farther from the equator. Okay? Solar radiation is weakest and even more spread out at the poles. Okay? And not only that, remember there's ice caps on the North and South Pole. They act like giant mirrors. So a lot of that is reflected back into space. Okay? making for an even colder regions in the polar area, right? So, as a result, the Earth is heated unequally, right? Hot temperatures near the equator and cold areas near the poles. This creates a convection current. Remember heat? Heat just flows, okay, through convection. Hot air rises at the equator, okay, and sinks at the poles. This is a very simplified, okay, model. It will, I'll show you later, okay, how the, how convection really works, okay? But, so we get hot air rising at the equator and sinking at the poles and comes back to the equator to get heated up. So this is a very simplified model, but nonetheless, it shows how convection distributes heat from the hot areas to the cold areas, like a giant pot of boiling water, right? Okay.
So, how does Earth transfer heat from the equator to the poles? Okay, question on the left-hand side. Answer on the right-hand side. Remember to use the answer bank to determine which words best complete these blanks here. Go ahead and pause it. I'm going to move on. Okay, the last thing we're going to talk about is ozone in the stratosphere. Okay. Well, pollution and a chemical called CFCs have created holes in the ozone layer. CFCs are a chemical released from aerosol sprays, cans, and air conditioners. Much of these chemicals have been banned, and thankfully, some of these holes have been disappearing, like this huge hole over here, over Antarctica. Well, remember, the ozone layer protects us from harmful UV radiation. Okay? So, as a result, more skin cancer and other problems, health problems, have increased. Okay, like more sunburns and simple things like that. Okay, so these spray cans release CFCs. Okay, and these CFCs are very light chemicals. They float up to the top to the ozone layer. Sunlight breaks them down and that chlorine rips apart our ozone layer, breaking apart ozone molecules. And these ozone molecules are good because they absorb UV radiation. They're like our force field, right? They protect us from harmful, high, highly dangerous ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Okay? So once again, CFC here, sunlight breaks the chlorine off and it breaks apart that O3 okay, molecule. And that chlorine molecule sits up, stays up there, and it's free to continue to break up O3 molecules, okay? So, here's a simplified version, CFCs, right? They float up to the top of the ozone layer, and they destroy it, allowing for more harmful radiation. CFCs, okay, and pollution, chemicals like CFCs are given off from cars, pollution, and aerosols, cans, right, and air conditioning units. So, as a result we get more sunburns and skin cancer and more okay health related problems all right so there you have it but another problem with ozone is smog okay his problem facing cities is smog smog is the result of pollution from cars and industry so in our cities we get this really bad smog okay and that smog is a result of pollution. One of the chemicals in smog is ozone. Okay? Ozone in the stratosphere is good. It protects us from UV radiation. Remember, ozone okay, at the ground level is bad and has some serious health issues. Okay? Health problems associated with ozone and smog include chest pain, coughing, throat irritation, and congestion. Many people have asthma. And a big problem of that, and a big result of asthma, is the smog and the ozone, okay? It can worsen bronchitis, emphysema, and asthma, okay? Ground-level ozone can also reduce lung function and it actually inflame and scar the linings of the lungs. Repeated exposure, like I said, will permanently scar lung tissue and cause lung damage, okay? So, ozone, good or bad? Question on the left-hand side, last one for today, answer on the right-hand side. Please, once again, use the answer bank to determine which words are best complete the sentence here. Okay, and go ahead and write this down, and you are done for today, except for your summary here. So go ahead and pause this. I'm going to move on. All right, so summarize. Make a nice concept map here, and then when you're finished, read this, okay? Remember, these answer bank words don't go in your answer bank, okay? So, just use them to complete your summary here and put a little thinking into it. All right, so like I said, go ahead and pause this. Work on your summary for 20 good points, okay? And then you're all finished, and we'll see you next time for day three of three. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.